Summary of a Monster Calls by Patrick Ness In an English town in the present day, Connor O'Malley, who is 13, keeps having the same nightmare. When he wakes up from this horrible dream, a monster in the shape of the yew tree next to the church behind Connor's house comes to see him. Connor doesn't fear the monster, which is a surprise to the monster. The monster tells Connor that it will tell him three stories, and then Connor will have to tell a fourth story about what happens in his repeating nightmare. This idea scares Connor to death. In the morning, Connor does his usual things. His mother has cancer, so he often has to make himself food, brush his teeth, get dressed, pack his bag, and get to school on his own. His mother is upset that he has to do these things by himself because she is so tired. Because of this, she has asked his grandma to come visit and help take care of him and her. Connor argues that they don't need his grandmother because he doesn't like her, but his mother insists. At school, Connor is picked on by Anton, Sully, and Harry, who are all friends of Harry. Lily, Connor's friend, tries to protect him by pushing Sully into a bush, but this makes Connor feel even worse. When Connor's teacher, Miss Kwan, asks what's going on, he lies and says he fell and Harry was helping him get up. When Lily pushed Sully, she got in trouble. On her way home that night, Lily talks to Connor about how he lied, but he ignores her. He is mad at her because their mothers are good friends, and when Lily's mother told her that Connor's mother was sick, she told other people right away. Connor's friends and teachers started to treat him differently after that, mostly by leaving him alone. Connor's grandma comes to see him. She is very strict with Connor and starts talking about taking him out of his current school and putting him in a school near her house. This worries Connor because it sounds like she is talking about a time after his mother has died. Connor's grandmother gets mad at him because he says she doesn't need to be there. However, Connor's grandmother tells him that he shouldn't have to take care of his mother, their house, and himself all by himself. The monster tells the first story that night. There was once a king whose sons, wife, and daughter all died during his lifetime. He was succeeded by his grandson, a young prince. The king then married again, this time to a young woman who many people thought was a witch. When the king died, the queen wanted to keep her throne by marrying the prince. But the prince ran away with the daughter of a farmer, who was his lover. One morning while they were traveling, the prince woke up and saw that the girl had been killed and it looked like he had done it. The young prince thought it was the queen and got the locals to set her on fire. But the monster stopped this from happening to the queen because it was the prince who did it. Connor asks the monster if the lesson he should learn is to be nicer to his grandma. The monster laughs at this idea. The monster then says that he saved the queen because she was an evil witch but not a killer. Connor wants to know who the good guy is in the story. The monster tells him that there aren't always good guys and bad guys in life. Connor's grandma tells him the next day that Connor's mother needs to go to the hospital because her treatments aren't working. She also tells Connor that his father is coming to see him. His parents are no longer together, and he now lives in the United States with his new wife, Stephanie, and their new baby. Connor talks to his mother, and she tells him that she'll be fine. The doctors just need to change how they treat her. Connor moves in with his grandma for now, but he keeps having the same frightening dream over and over again. Connor doesn't really feel at home at his grandmother's because she has a lot of rules that he's never had to follow before. When Connor's father gets there, they go out to dinner, where Connor says that he is fine and that his mother will be fine. Connor also tells his dad that he doesn't like living with his grandma and asks if he can move to America to live with his dad. His father says that it wouldn't be fair to Connor to pull him out of his life in England, but Connor accuses him of not wanting Connor to come to America with him. When Connor's dad drops him off at his grandmother's house, the monster shows up to tell the boy another story. A doctor of medicine and a priest lived together 150 years ago. The apothecary used old ways of medicine and was so greedy that he often charged too much for his cures. The apothecary told the parson to cut down the yew tree in the rectory, because yew trees can be used to heal if they are cut down in the right way. 
The priest said no, and then he started preaching against the apothecary because he used old ways. But one day, the parson's girls got sick with an illness, and the parson begged the apothecary to help. He told the apothecary that he would let him cut down the yew tree and that he would give talks in the apothecary's favor. The apothecary told him he couldn't help, and the parson's girls died. The monster then destroyed the parson's house because the parson wasn't a true believer and should have given the apothecary the yew tree when he first asked. The monster shows Connor how the parson's house was destroyed and asks Connor if he wants to help. Connor helps with the damage, but when the monster goes, Connor can see that he has destroyed every inch of his grandmother's sitting room, which was full of valuable antiques. When his grandma gets home, she screams out of fear. But instead of hurting Connor, she knocks over the only display cabinet that was still standing and cries in her room. Connor's father comes back to make him food the next morning. Connor worries if he will be punished for what he did, but his dad says no, asking what could possibly be the point. Then, his father tells Connor that his mother has taken a turn. When Connor goes to see his mother in the hospital, she tells him that some of the new treatments haven't been working. They will try a last choice that is made from new trees. Connor thinks that the monster must have come to help heal his mother. Connor's father then tells him that he has to fly back to America that night. Before he leaves, though, he tries to be honest with Connor about what will happen. He tells Connor that his mother probably won't get better with the new medicine. Connor says that his father left him and his mother, but he is still sure that his mother will be fine. Connor doesn't talk to anyone at school for several days. He has stopped doing his schoolwork, but his teachers never ask him about it or call on him. At the same time, he is still mad at Lily. When Harry, Anton, and Sully come over to pick on him, that's the only time he talks to other kids. But Harry starts to understand that this is what Connor wants, so one day at lunch, he just tells Connor, I no longer see you. Connor is angry and feels powerless and like he doesn't matter. Then, when it was time for the third story, the monster came to school. In the third story, a man became invisible because everyone was used to not seeing him. So, the monster showed the man to the other people. As the monster tells this story, it beats Harry, breaking his arm, nose, and several teeth. When it's done, it tells Connor that there are harder things than being invisible. Connor lands in the office of the headmistress, who is shocked by how badly Connor hurt Harry. Connor tries to say that the monster did it, but Miss Kwan says that many people saw Connor beating up Harry. The headmistress says that Connor would usually be kicked out of school, but that she couldn't do that because his mother is sick. When Connor goes back to class, everyone is scared of him. He sees that the monster was right, he is no longer unseen, but he is also further away than ever. About a week later, Lily gives him a card saying that she misses being his friend and that she sees him. Before Connor can answer Lily, though, he has to leave class to go to the hospital. When he gets there, his mother tells him that her new treatment isn't working. Connor says that she is lying and won't look at or touch her. She tells him it's all right to be angry. Connor asks to be taken home, and when he gets there, he kicks the yew tree in the backyard and asks the monster why it didn't heal his mother. The monster says that it didn't come to heal his mother, but to heal him. The monster says it's Connor's turn to tell the fourth story, which is about what happens in his reoccurring dream. Connor acts out the story, his mother is standing on the edge of a cliff when a huge thing grabs her and tries to pull her over the edge. Connor holds onto her, feeling her get heavier and heavier, until he has to let go. The monster tells Connor that he could have held on longer, but he decided to let her go. Connor says, with tears in his eyes, that he always knew she would die. He just wants to stop having to wait, feel pain, and be alone. The monster is happy that he told the truth. Then Connor says that it's his fault that she's going to die, which the monster says is not true at all. The monster tells him that all he wanted to do was stop his own pain, which is a very normal thing to do. Connor can want his mother to leave and also want to save her, because humans are complicated beasts. Connor falls asleep in the monster's nest because he feels better. 
Connor wakes up to find that his grandma has been looking for him like crazy. She takes him to the hospital because his mother is in a very bad way. Connor tells his mother one last truth at the hospital, he doesn't want her to leave. The monster tells him that he will stay with him until the end, and Connor starts to cry because he knows the end is very close. Connor clings to his mother tightly, and by doing so, he could finally let her go. About the author. In 1971, Patrick Ness was born in the United States. His father was in the U.S. Army, so the family moved around a lot when he was young. They finally settled down in Los Angeles. Ness went to the University of Southern California to study English writing. After that, he got a job as a business writer for a cable company. When he went to London in 1999, he was writing his first book. In 2003, his first book, The Crash of Hennington, came out. In 2004, he put out a collection of short stories. Ness became a British citizen in 2005, and in 2006, he and his girlfriend formed a civil partnership. Then, in 2008, 2009, and 2010, he put out a series of books for young adults. The next year, he wrote A Monster Calls, which was based on an idea by Siobhan Dowd. Ness kept writing books for both young adults and adults until 2015, when he started Writing Class, a spin-off of the TV show Doctor Who. Release was his most recent book, which came out in 2017. Ness has also worked as a writer for several British and American newspapers and taught creative writing at Oxford. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.